Guys, alhamdulillah, thank you. Thank you guys for being patient with me. Uh, you might not be seeing these for long, right? Uh, the appointment is scheduled, alhamdulillah, honestly. But, uh, you know, in this video, I'm just going to explain the entire process that I need to get prepared for this entire thing. So, uh, thank you for staying tuned. And my appointment's coming soon. Stay tuned for some of those videos because it's going to be great, right? Removing all these tattoos, that's what you wanted, guys. So, I'm bringing you that content, all right? So, stay tuned. Way of Life SQ, keeping it 100. I'm finally removing my tattoos. Man, it's, 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 it's been a tough decision. It's been a long one. And for those of you, uh, man, some of you have just been waiting for me to say that for a long time now. And uh, before I tell you more about that, uh, which will come more towards the end of the video about my exact details of removing those said tattoos, I want to tell you a little bit more about them uh, for those of you who've always wondered about it, you know. Before we do, just a quick announcement. I'm contemplating whether I should or should not release my Dava Man doesn't want to release our podcast video. I'm contemplating. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Okay, that's it. That and why I married... Uh, how my first marriage broke off within a year or under a year. That Look out for that video too. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to drop that one, inshallah. But the Dawa Man one, I'm not too sure. I don't know if it's a good idea because I recorded it already. But I might have been upset when I recorded it. I don't know. Just let me know. Let me know. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. Anyways, uh, here, as you can tell, I'm at work right now, school. Uh, this video is definitely still sponsored by Sindeed. Why? Why? How is it SQ? These pants are from Sindeed. These are fire pants, bro. I'm telling you, I'm sleeping on Sindeed, bro. Link in the description. You're sleeping on them. You have to sleep. This stuff is fire. Anyways, finally removing my tattoos, guys. It required some savings. It required some stuff, but alhamdulillah. Anyways, let me jump into it. So these tattoos that you see, or you don't see, they're covered right now, right? Some of you love it when I cover. Some of you always wonder, SQ, why don't you cover? Why? I'm going to go through that right now. I got these tattoos in 2010. I was in a different state at that time, a different state of mind, state of emotion, state of spirituality. I got this a long time ago. And for me, it was ink therapy. That's what it was for. It was showing signs of my growth, my evolution, my emotional growth, whatever. I don't know, but I used it to get over whatever issues that I was having. And if you know, I did have issues that I've discussed deeply in videos over here, uh, in podcasts with Ilm Feed, with Iera, with Fresh and Grounded. I've talked about these issues before, so go check them out. Do your homework on me first, okay? Um, or not. Go on with your life and day. You got better things to do than research about SQ, bro. I'm a nobody. All right, so I got them then. When I accepted Islam, meaning I started becoming more practicing and just like refocus on my religion, which I prior to was never even close to doing that, obviously I had these, these scars. And what I like to call, I like to consider them a scar because it reminds you of where you used to be, right? Like if you look at the scab on your knee, each scar, each scab tells a story, doesn't it? It's interesting. You see, when you, when you start looking at things like this, when you start looking at your sins, your past mistakes, your, 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 your flaws as prior scar or history lessons, you view your circumstance differently. The scar on your knee, the scab on your knee tells a story of how old you were, what was going on in your mind, where you were going while you fell or tripped. It tells a story, doesn't it? Each scar does. Each sin does. These scars, they tell a story. To the outside world looking in, it tells a story of a dude who's maybe still proud of his past, wants to show you who he was, or he's always showing you. That's your story to you. And I can't tell you how to write your story, your narrative, your perception. I can't control that, right? And I feel like there's a lot of YouTubers who control their perception uh, into the media and to the public so that people perceive them uh, you know, nicely. I had a dai, someone that you would not, I'm not going to say obviously their names. They used the word obnoxious to describe me. 
And I thank them because I'm like, that's exactly who I am. I am obnoxious. So thank you. At least the, 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 what you've shown me right now is that my genuine nature is coming on camera. If you're calling me obnoxious or cringe or whatever, that's because that's who I am. You understand? This isn't a mask. This isn't a facade. This is who I am. I am kind of corny, cringe, whatever. Anyways, you tell your own story. My story tells me of a dude who was in a very dark place in life. It tells me who I used to be, how I used to think, how I used to treat women, how I used to treat my body, myself, my religion, my faith, my, my relationship with God. That's what the story tells me. So my story is much deeper from my perspective than it is to you. So when you're out there, SQ, remove them. It's like SQ, remove a part of who you are today because removing that part of who you were is what made me into who I am today. Does that make sense? I hope it does. People like SQ don't walk and show your back to the camera. Why not? This is my YouTube channel. Don't watch it. People just want to micromanage you all the time. Like, goodness, imagine the messenger saw some micromanaging us. No way. That's what sunnahs are doing. Sunnahs are best practices. Do them. They're the best practices. I'm just walking around and people got problems with it. And that's the thing. It doesn't matter if I'm removing my tattoos. You'll always have a problem with me. If it's not the tattoos, then it's, SQ, why do you move with your hands? Why do you walk around and move, SQ? Why do you dress like this, SQ? Why do you speak like that, SQ? If it ain't one thing, it's another thing. And a lot of times people get caught up in the cycle of people pleasing instead of Allah pleasing. And that's not who I am. I'm not a people pleaser. I'm uniquely myself. I'm unapologetically myself. Unapologetically myself. Who I am. You see, these scars, these tattoos that you see, I see scars. These scars remind me of who I used to be, how I've become, my journey, my time cycle, my growth, my evolution. Call it what you want to call it. That's what they remind me of. And some of you are like, you just remove it. Some, of, some people who have tattoos do remove them because they, they, you know, like, I don't want to use the word ashamed because I am to some degree, obviously, with my stuff too. But I feel like a lot of times when people move it, unless it's really, truly for the sake of Allah, please forgive me. For those of you who genuinely moved it for the sake of Allah, good, good for you. You know, I'm of the opinion and so are the scholars that have spoken to, believe it or not. I'm in contact with people who have knowledge, all right? Believe it or not. I used to, you guys don't know. I used to hide my arm. The shaitan convinced me so much of how bad of a sinner I was when I accepted Islam because of these tattoos that I never even used to go to the masjid. I never even stepped foot in the masjid because if I wore long sleeves, I was still, the shaitan put in my ear Waswasa. That part of it, my sleeve would show over here. No. Every time I saw a brother with a tattoo on his neck or someplace that he couldn't cover it on his hand, I used to tell them to cover it up. But the truth was, I was projecting my own insecurities that I had. They didn't even know I had tattoos that I had about myself. My own insecurities were projected onto them because I was insecure. I hated myself for having them. Hence, I used to spread that they should hate themselves too. Cover up your sins, brother. That's the, that's the type of tip I was on before. That's the type of vibe I was on before. There's people like that in the Dawah game who are like that. I'm not one of them, but I used to be one of them. That's why I can empathize. I can empathize with a few. You see, a lot of you don't know this. So what I did was, I said, I realized, that listen, this is just the shaitan. This is how I break out of it. Overthinking, aren't I? I spoke, I said, uh, this is the shaitan's way of preventing me from actually going to the masjid, the house of Allah. I'm going to just wear a long sleeve shirt, but I'm going to wear like a thobe or some type of like dress shirt that had a cuff on it. So I had a button so it wouldn't slide up and down. 
when it came time for wadu, I would wait for people to leave if I had to make wadu. First and foremost, I used to only make wadu from home because I was so embarrassed of my arm. You would never have thought that, would you? Some of you are surprised. Say, wallahi, that's not true. I used to be so embarrassed. No one should see it. I'd pray, I'd pray, and I just felt like I was on my own. I was on my own. No one, no one would understand me. I was so afraid. I had a secret that I wasn't sharing with everyone. Secret. I'm like, yo, they're going to judge me. They're going to hate, wrong me, whatever. Then I started making some friends at the masjid. I saw that they were adding me on Facebook. So I went on Facebook. I deleted all my old photos. I didn't want them to know who I used to be. It's like I'm being undercover. Now is when I'm becoming a liar. Not that we shouldn't hide our sins. I don't want to be clear over here. Clear that this is not the same as we're talking about hiding sins. Try to see the difference over here, guys. Try. Try to just open your eyes and stop seeing only the tip of your nose. Try to see something further than yourself for a second, guys. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about drinking and all that. That shouldn't be publicized at all. But I didn't even want them to see that I had a past. I wanted them to think that this is who I am. A nice kufi wearing, thobe wearing dude. That's who I was. But the reality is, I'm not that. And it took me time to realize this. So let me continue with the story. I remember I became friends with people at the masjid. And I was, by the way, delved deep into extremism. That's a story for another time. I made friends at the halakha. We had a halakha guy invited to just sit with them because I was already at the masjid just chilling by myself like a recluse, a hermit. Got invited over there. That's where my, my speaking career got started, by the way, which could be a separate video. And uh, eventually we got really, really cool going out to places, this and that, but I'm obviously worried about my arm. So one day, there's a thing called sports night that the masjid, the halakha does where we take the youth out in part of the halakha and we play basketball in an indoor court, safe space, so on and so forth. It was my time. I had to go. I had to go. To sports night. And we're about to play basketball and I'm wearing a long sleeve t-shirt because I'm like, I'm not going to have anyone look at me. And the next thing you know, I am just shooting bricks because I'm not used to playing in a long sleeve shirt. Like, it's just not right. And out of frustration, I just lift my sleeves up and decide to play and roll them up and just start cooking everyone, right? This is when I was a little more younger and less heavy. But I'm getting there. I'm getting there, inshallah. I'm getting back to that. And like the youth, the kids just stopped. And I'm like, oh God, oh no, please, please don't come. Please don't say that's haram. I know it's haram. Please, please don't come at me and yell at me and just talk down to me and just say this, bro. What are you doing? I don't want that. Please, I already do that to myself enough. These youth came up to me instead and said, bro, bro, why, yo, let me see what happened. Bro, how'd you, how'd you become this way? What happened? How'd you go from this? And it just opened conversation and I was able to tell them and I realized that, hang on a second, this thing that's my biggest insecurity is actually my biggest asset. Hang on a second. My sins, my past can actually have a positive impact on me. That was a game changer. I went to Umrah, much later on, went to Umrah. People over there, Ayani, Aki. Do you know anyone who does this? Every time you're about to speak and they want to speak, they just, Allah was say, Muhammad. They would just like cut you off, but in a, in a nice way. Cover this up. It's haram. Go laser it off. Go do that sort of stuff. But the real question is has Allah forgiven me? I believe so, yes. Imagine the prerequisite for anyone to become a Muslim was that not only does Allah have to erase all your deeds, but so do you. Now you see, the only deed that we have to erase ourselves are our own debts with people. You understand? Our promises, our debts with people, those are something that are between you and them. Allah doesn't come between that and you wronging people, usurping their rights. You understand? That's a very personal relationship that you got to do uh, between you and them. 
But imagine like you had to undo everything from the past. Allah forgives you for everything. Yet a lot of you guys out there, a lot of us have made it difficult. Us, me included, I made it difficult for people. I've been there before, I've done it before. Imagine, The Rock couldn't become a Muslim until he removed his tattoo. If you're some man, imagine David Beckham couldn't become a Muslim. He wants to, he believes in the oneness of Allah. He believes that indeed the Messenger Sallallahu is the last and final messenger. Imagine David Beckham. MashaAllah, David. MashaAllah, may Allah accept from you. Let's, let's read this together. But before you do or after you read this, you gotta go laser all your tattoos. Imagine that was the prerequisite. You see, that's not Allah's prerequisite. That's your prerequisite. That's your prerequisite. That's not Allah's prerequisite. That's your prerequisite. Because you have a problem with yourself. There's insecurities within you. There's problems within you. There's issues within you that you're not insecure that you're insecure about and you project your insecurities onto everyone else. And some of you out there, you don't like the fact that a person could have tattoos, live in the dunya, do all these things, and then turn new leaf. While well, you're just jealous that you couldn't do that. Let's be honest here. Let's be truthful here. Came back from Umrah. They brainwashed me in there. Brainwashed me. Some of you are like, but they were giving you good nasiha. See, the Messenger Sallallahu knew who to and when to and how to give nasiha to people. It was wisdom. It wasn't just this cookie cutter. Nowadays, people get excited to give you nasiha. And this is not to confuse that the deen, half of the deen is nasiha. Don't get those two things twisted. It's people who are like a game looking for your flaws and your moves and watching just so you can slip so that they can give you the nasiha because they get a high off of it. They think that they're doing Allah's work by doing that. Understand. SQ, you're saying you can't give nasiha? That's not what SQ is saying. That's what you're, the, the shaitan whispering in your ear and doing waswasa with you is telling you that that's what I'm saying. I came back from Umrah. They were just putting these ideas in my head. Ideas in my head. I came back. I was a different person from Umrah. I lost myself. You thought you would find yourself in Islam. You'd find yourself when you go to Umrah. But I was lost. I didn't know who I was. Do I need to be who they want me to be? You guys want to be on the screen? Who, who they want SQ to be? Or is SQ going to be who he is, when he is, how he is, for however he is? And that's what I had to decide. And I decided to show you who I am. This is just me. This is just me. For the good, for the bad, for the mistakes, for the hastiness, whatever it is, this is me. Will I mess up? Absolutely. But I'm not afraid to mess up and I'm not afraid to own my mess ups. I came back, I used to wear those NBA sleeves because, I, because people were like, Oh, why are you wearing short sleeves? You're telling me that because of tattoos, I got to wear long sleeves for the rest of my life? Goodness, you have no idea how difficult you're making the dean on people, do you? How difficult you're making the dean on people. At all, zero idea. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. I wore a sleeve, like those NBA sleeves that covers my arm. And I would go, and one of the, the imams, the sheikhs at the masjid, he said, yeah, yeah. And he called me by my name. He called me, how are you doing, Habibi? Everything okay? He's like, there's something off with you. I said, nothing, Shaykh. Everything's fine. But you know, people who are conscious of Allah, they're conscious of their own emotions, they're conscious of other people's emotions as well. He was just like, why are you doing this? He asked me, why am I covering it? I said, Shaykh, look, I don't think it's a good idea to show my sins, to... I don't think it's a good idea to show people these things. I don't want the youth to think negatively of me. He said, Habibi, listen to me. Allah's forgiven you. Allah's forgiven you for these things already. You don't have to cover anything at all. Because he realized that when I was covering that, I was covering me. I was covering who I am. You guys don't understand that there's a deeper connection with these things that you just like give credit to. Anyways, this video is getting kind of long. I'm going to end it over here. Give you some good clickbait sort of title. I'm gonna do that right now for you guys just to make it more fun and entertaining for you guys. I'm gonna just make it more 
more more fun for you. <laughs> I love doing. I would say a random date and what this because this is what people want to know. And you know what? This is gonna show the true ones who watch the full video from who just watch the first you know thirty seven seconds and make a whole judgment for a twenty minute video or so. Okay, watch this. Read. Look out for those comments. The real ones who made it this far. Look out for those comments. Guys, alhamdulillah, thank you. Thank you guys for being patient with me. Uh, you might not be seeing these for long, right? Uh, the appointment is scheduled, alhamdulillah, honestly. But, uh, you know, in this video, I'm just going to explain the entire process that I need to get prepared for this entire thing. So uh, thank you for staying tuned. And my appointment's coming soon. Stay tuned for some of those videos because it's going to be great, right? Removing all these tattoos, that's what you wanted, guys. So I'm bringing you that content, all right? So stay tuned. Look at that. Look at my face. Did you see my face? I need to do an instant replace on my face. God, that's what people want. That's cute. You're going to remove your tattoos. Yes, brother, I'm so proud of you. That's what they want. You can keep it. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm trying to make Allah proud. I'm trying to make my mom proud, my wife proud, my children proud. Seeing the messenger saw some face on the day of judgment proud. Having him at the, the Kauthar Pond proud. That's what I'm proud about. That's what I'm excited about. I'm not excited to make anyone else proud. Hope you guys understand. Hope you guys can vibe with what I'm saying right now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and gave you a new perspective as well. Sorry if you feel like I clickbaited you or whatever the case might be, but I wanted to get my point across. I made a clickable title. And I'm owning that I'm not doing any of those things within this video. But thank you so much for watching. Check out some of these other videos over here as well too. I'm going to get back to work, edit this video. I don't know what time it's going to be up. But until next time, I hope you guys remember. Sponsored by Sadid. Got these fire kicks though. I'm out. <laughs>